Sean, 250 Shrewsbury Town appearances. What's your initial reaction to that? Yeah, I was delighted to um, obviously get 250. Uh, it's more um, other people saying it to me how much of an achievement it is really, because I've just I've just enjoyed playing, so it's not like a massive thing for me, but. Like I said, because people have been saying that it's a brilliant achievement, family and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm just proud, yeah. The last player to get 250 Shrewsbury Town appearances, Kelvin Langmead, over a decade ago. And before that, you've got to go back to the 90s. You're only the second player this century to hit 250 for Shrewsbury Town. 37 goals, 52 assists, 32 yellow cards, just the one red card, and over 18,000 minutes on the pitch as well. Yeah, no, I'm going to be saying it to you quite a lot. It's such an achievement. Yeah, no thanks. Like you, like you said, um, that's for other. It's for other people, and like I said, I'm, I'm proud that my family have, uh, have said how much of achievement an, an achievement it is and stuff. But I didn't think I'd had that many, many yellow cards to be honest. But <laughs> I must have, yeah. We've got forty photos from your time here. We've got quite a lot. Hopefully, it captures the most important or the most memorable moments, both the good and the bad, from your time here. Have you got any that you expect to come up here? What do you expect from the interview? I'm not sure. I'm not sure to be honest. I know. I think the uh, the Liverpool disallowed goal will be on here. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that. I can't. I can't really think. I I do know some of them that um, I've got a feeling will be on there, but we'll just wait and see. Fair enough. And as I mentioned, Kevin Langmead to you earlier. I'm, I read an interview of his this morning. He said that while he was here, he had a lot of interest, but he chose to stay from other clubs. That is over his he was here for six years. Have there been interest from other clubs for yourself over your seven years here? Yeah, yes. Um, obviously, I've been out of contract um, two or three times. I think over the, over the time, so um, you do hear rumours that someone wants you or whatever. But it's just always been in my best interest to to stay at Shrewsbury and. And I'm glad they have now. Yeah. You elaborate a bit. Why is it in your best interest to stay here? Or why was it in your best interest to stay here at those times? Just, I suppose, because um, I've played my best football of my career at Shrewsbury. So um, it just, it, I don't know why, it just it just clicked straight away. And it just suits me. Um, the club just suits me. But it's just one of them things. Sometimes that happens with players. And um, I think I was at the right age to settle down and... Um, have a good career somewhere, and fortunately it was through for yeah. The very first picture, June 2015, pre-season training session, a sprightly 27-year-old Sean Woolley <laughs> walks in to my Montgomery Waters Meadow, so I'm from Luton Town. Did you ever think you'd reach a landmark, like 250 appearances for one club? Um, probably not, no. I was at Southport for quite a long time as well. I, I, I have had a lot of clubs before that, but... Um, it's different when it's that lower down. It's like someone offers you like hundred pound more a week, then you go there. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? So it's like you just hop in clubs yeah. and stuff like that. But um, no, I, I didn't. I didn't think I'd get two hundred and fifty when I signed. No. I was signed by Mickey Mellon. What was he like to work with? Yeah, really good. Yeah. Um, obviously, he, he was the one who signed me, so um, he must have thought something of me so um that's always a good start in a relationship um but yeah no he was he was good i remember I, we was we was uh, struggling a bit the the time he was here but the time i was here with him sorry but i know uh, the season before he'd done brilliant things at shrewsbury and got them promoted so um yeah he's a really good manager when you did sign you obviously weren't uh, the only one eight of you come through the that window so you've got Martin Woods, Darren McKnight, yourself obviously, Matt Sadler's there, and then Junior Brown, Abu Agogo, Cayman Anderson, Matt Tootle. You still get the chance to talk to any of these lads? Um, not, not really. Uh, to, uh, Matt Tootle lives uh, in Widnes, so um, he lives by mine, so um, I, I've seen him a couple of times. Uh, Abs have seen him a couple of times, Junior I've spoken to, um, and Sads I've spoken to a couple of times as well, yeah. Uh, overall, who out of these was the best teammate for your first season? Um, I think the ones who done really well for Shrewsbury was obviously Junior, Abs and Sads. Um, they were outstanding in, in the season that we done really well and Junior done his knee which 
was unfortunate for him and unfortunate for us as well. Um, so that was disappointing, yeah. But no, them, them three were, were brilliant for Shrewsbury. What about this next one? Is uh, your very first headshot. Day before your 28th birthday, I believe this was taken. Did you, do you remember if you did anything special for your birthday? I can't remember, no. Pro <laughs> probably not. What about um, this next one again? Your debut, Millwall. Obviously, 2-1 uh, loss. You replaced John Lee Rackfro. Day after your 28th birthday. What do you remember about the game? I was disappointed that I didn't start, if I'm being honest, I remember. Um, but yeah, I come off the bench. It, was it, did we get beat 1-0 or? It was 2-1. 2-1. Um, yeah, I kind of remember, remember it. Um, I think my little boy come. Uh, and my wife come the game as well, so yeah, it, it was um, it was a good it was a good thing to come on, but then I didn't expect to not play for a, a while. I know I did a few more sub subs, but not to start a game for a while, yeah. Yeah, so it took quite a while. I can't exactly how long it was on the bench a lot or out the squad a lot. Jump forward a little bit towards December now. Your very first goal, crew away, 90th minute winner. Do you remember the strike? Yeah, I cut in on my left and uh, curled it the far corner, yeah. Yeah, it was brilliant, yeah, just, I, I, I thought I played well that day and it was my first start in the league. I started a couple of FA Cup games, but that was the first one in the league, but I was, um, I think crew were down, down the bottom as well, so it was a big, it was a big win. Um, so yeah, all the lads were buzzing, but yeah, it was a good moment, yeah. What, we, what means more, the fact that it's a late winner or the fact that it's your first goal for Shrewsbury? It's both, both, both are, um, both are brilliant, yeah. The, the, a last minute goal is one of the best feelings. And I, I'd done it again a couple of weeks later, you didn't I? Did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just had that knack of scoring late goals at first. Yeah, there you go. There was that, there was that one a few minutes, a few uh, weeks later, 93rd <laughs> minute this time, where Burton, John Riak, Riak, throw down the left. Cuts it across the box. You've got a lot of time to think about it. Put it into the bottom corner. I mean, how would you link up with that crack pro that season? Yeah, good. Yeah, I I just remember from that goal that um, I think the gaffer brought someone someone on just before me, just before me. But when he brought him on, I thought I I don't think I'll come on here. Um, but then I don't know what time I come on. Do you know? <coughs> It was late, very late though, yeah, but Burton were pushing for for a goal and we just, John Louis hit, hit them on the break and then squared it, yeah, and like, the keeper just come out and just tapped it in, really. When you do have that much time to think about a shot, can, do you overthink a shot or you, what are you thinking as it's coming across the box? You've got so much space as well at that point as well. No one's particularly near you. There's a defender, say, a few yards sort of to your left, but otherwise you've got a lot of time and space. Yeah, no, and, and I knew the defender wasn't getting near me, so I could just let it run. And like I said, the keepers just made my mind up for me by rushing out and I just knocked it past him, yeah. And then back on the score sheet one week later, Sheffield Wednesday and the uh, yeah. J celebration as well, right? Can yeah, you just yeah. explain what that's about for us as well? It's just me, uh, me little boy, Jude. Um, I've just always done it really, yeah. He's, he's eight now. Oh, sorry, he's seven now. He's nearly eight. Um, but yeah, I, I, I remember that one as well. It was uh, it was the FA Cup, and again, it was a bit like I was dying to get on. Um, and then I can't can't remember who won the penalty, but I just had a, I just I, yeah, I had one of them feelings that he was going to miss. Um, and luckily, there was only really me running uh, for the rebound. Um, yeah, and again, I've just t tapped it in, really, yeah. Good game, to be fair, it was a 3-2, but you getting up May United in the next round. What does, I guess that's the magic of the FA Cup. What does the FA Cup mean to you? Yeah, um, we've, we've had some uh, great ties at Shrewsbury. I've never really done that well before I come here in the FA Cup. I've always been knocked out in early rounds, but um, fortunately, at my stage in, in my career, um, we've played some big, all the big teams, really. Um, but yeah, I remember that game. It was it was probably the, one of the most disappointing games in my career. If I'm being honest, it was just like um, it was just we just we got battered. To be fair, they they were just unreal that night. And um, second half we had a couple of chances, but the game was gone by then. And I think it was three 0 wasn't it? But 
I was that disappointed. I didn't get anyone's um, top or that. I just walked off sulking. But um, yeah, I was disappointed. Well, that's actually one of my questions. If you got a top, but fair enough. Was it disappointing? You say just be, even though they are Man United, you still felt you should have done better in that game. Do you think as a team? Yeah, I do. But only only because did um, did lost in the Europa League. I think on the Thursday, and Sunderland had beat them on the the weekend. So it was like. They weren't at the best, man. You obviously like like old, like they, like they used to be. Um, so it was like we've got a good chance here, but we just we just let them let them do what they want, and and they did. <clears throat> How did you feel about getting Man United in the draw? Was that your first big FA Cup draw? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I remember watching the um, the draw, and it was it was brilliant to to get Man United. But um, I don't know about other people, but for me. And it, it's probably unfair on the, fa the home fans as well, but I'd rather get an away draw just because you don't. You, you, I get to play it Shrewsbury every week, well every two weeks. But to go, I would have loved to have gone to Old Trafford, for, um, for instance. But yeah, it was it was it was still good though. Yeah, and it was on. Um, I think it was on BT on like the Monday night as well, which which was good. We're gonna jump forward a little bit now. 2016-17 season, great escape. This one. Do you remember which <laughs> goal this is? Yeah. Oxford. That's it. Yeah, ninety yeah. eighth minute, made it two 0 Yeah, I, I just I remember that one just because I'd been injured for a few weeks before that. Um, I'd been out for like six weeks and um, I come back and then we were one 0 up and then they had a free kick on the edge of our box. Um, but <laughs> I've just been a bit selfish and thought maybe if it breaks, I'm in. And then luckily it did, and I had like the full the full uh, length of the pitch to run on my own and then the keepers just made me mind up so I dinked it over him, yeah. yeah tidy little finish. But it was a, yeah, it was, a, it was a good moment just because, like I said, I've come, I'd come back from injury just that game. Um, so it was nice but I did get injured straight away almost in training a few days later so I was out again for another couple of weeks, I think. <clears throat> when, when in, you know, say it was a, a tough season, what was it like being part of the squad during that, say, tough period where the form wasn't great and say, needed to get that boost towards the end of results to stay safe in the league? Yeah, I just I just remember that we didn't we had a terrible start and um, and we were struggling, but then Paul Hurst come in that season and he ch I, I knew that he liked me uh, from before as well, which is always a a. a a boost of your confidence if you know the manager coming in likes you already. Um, and he played with wingers as well, which obviously I'm a winger. So again, that was like Mickey Mellon didn't really play with, with wingers in my time at Shrewsbury. So um, I thought it, I thought it would suit me. And looking back now, it obviously did uh, him coming in. Um, but yeah, we changed to like a four four two. But he brought a, a few brilliant loan players in that season as well, not just the season after. It was that Tyler Roberts was just unbelievable talent. Um and and yeah, and, and we were pretty comfortable towards the end, if I remember rightly. I think it did go down to the last day but only if we got beat about ten nil on the last day by Oxford, I think it was. <laughs> you mentioned loan signings, I'm gonna to talk to them, ask you a little bit about them with this photo as well. Four three. Charlton, yeah. That's the one. You made it 3-2, Louis Dodds got two and Tyler Roberts was, you say, on loan from Westmore Chavin at the time. Got the last one, you mentioned him and he's now at Leeds. We've had Ben Godfrey, um, Sally Kaikai, Dean Henderson. Who's the best loan player you think you've played with here in your seven years? Um, I think, I don't want to miss anyone out, but the most influential was Dean Henderson uh, by far. Obviously, a keeper's a, a big big position in the team and um he was outstanding and he was he was a he was a great lad as well to be fair. Um probably the best outfielder, like I said, was probably Tyler Roberts, yeah. He was just class. He was I think he was only eighteen when he came, but you could just see how good he was gonna be. And I'm glad for him that he's gone on to establish himself in the Premier League now. Yeah. I know football was a very fast moving business. Is do you still get a chance to get in contact with either of them? Or any no, other probably former loan players? No. Not really. I do speak to a few of the a few of the lads, but 
just over text or whatever sometimes, every now and then, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. With, with that season, I know you say fairly comfortable when it came to the final day, but when you did, you know, all but secure safety, what was that feeling like? Was it relief primarily? Or was it a bit more just... I just, t towards the end, I just felt like we were definitely going to stay up. Like, it wasn't ever in my head that we were going to go down that season. I, I, even, obviously, like I said, we had a really bad start and we were down there, but... Um, when Paul Lewis come in, we just we we just had um, a lot of grit about us, and we had good players then. And, and I just felt we was always comfortable that season, even though it might not have looked it on paper. Yeah. Uh, and 17-18, this one goal against Plymouth, long range, curled into bottom right hand corner. You had a few long range strikes. Do you? Do you ever? I forget the impression you that you look up a lot and you think, oh yeah, goal then. I just think you might as well shoot. Yeah. Um, no, I remember that one, yeah, it was a nice day, but um, we were flying before that and um, they just sat back and, and they, they, played, they played okay, but very defensive and we struggled to break them down, but then they went 1-0 up, didn't they? And that was the equaliser, yeah. Yeah, 15 <laughs> games on beaten at the start of the season. How does that feel? Does it make, is, do you get carried away a little bit almost, or are you always like, it's just another game and you just, Building slowly. Um, if I can retire and remember what 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 it felt like, but um, yeah, I, I suppose the first game was so scrappy here against Northampton, and, and we we scored last a last minute winner, um, but we didn't play very well. Um, but then we just but then we started to find our feet and, and start playing well in games as well. So as well as winning, so that was good. Just thinking that you're gonna. You were going to go into a game and play well and prob probably win, really, we were thinking. Um, yeah, it was a good feeling, yeah. <clears throat> this next one, another goal from that season. You do seem to love scoring away against MK, well, against MK. Don's flat out, let alone just away. But 86th minute, uh, top right corner of the box, laces, looped over the keeper. Is this one of your finest goals in a Shrewsbury Town shirt? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think it's probably the best just because... I don't really hit the ball like that, like like that. I normally curl it, but um, yeah, just I went went to wing back towards the end because we were pushing for an again for an equaliser, and um, like you said, I just I just thought I just looked up and thought I'll hit it, and luckily it flew in the top corner. Yeah. When it got to the end of that season, were you happy with third place as a finish? Um, we were disappointed the whole the whole se the whole season just because. Um, we kept winning every week, and then we'd come in and look at the scores, and Wigan and Blackburn had just had just won about five nil each. So it was hard. It was hard to keep up with them, but we did. Um, so right at the end, but then we, uh, I think, I rested in a couple of games towards the end of the season um, to get ready for the playoffs. So we were focusing on the playoffs then. Yeah. Um, yeah, listen, if you if we would have said at the start of the season will you take third place, we would have definitely been happy. But the way the season went, it was like we were destined to go up in the top two, but we just couldn't fight Wigan and Blackburn off. We were both incredible that season. Um, so yeah, I was I was happy, but disappointed as well. Yeah. And then Wembley twice as well. It's the first one. What did th this is. Just before you went down early, you got a tour of the stadium as well and everything like that. What did this day consist of? Do you remember? Was that the Lincoln one? Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, we, yeah we, we travelled down, didn't we? And then we went to Wembley and looked around and stuff, which was good. Um, but then the final was just, it just totally passed me by and, and it was gone and we were beat with, within a blink of an eye, really. And, and um, we were disappointed, but. We had the league to concentrate on then, which was good. Yeah, when you're, so is that how that game now comes to your head? It's just it went past you. You couldn't really enjoy the moment very much, even beforehand. Yeah, no, I remember. Um, oh no, yeah, it was brilliant beforehand and stuff. Yeah, uh, all my family was there, which is always good. Um, but I remember Paul Hurst and Chris Doig saying, "Don't let it pass you by," but. That checkered say final, it, it definitely did pass me by. I was just, um, it, it just, it was just a scrappy game and nothing really happened. 
Um, they got the goal, sat back, we couldn't break them down. So, yeah, it was it was a disappointing. Because obviously they were the league below as well, but they were a good side, but um, we should have done better on the day, yeah. This one, this is, I think, the closest you might have come to in that game to scoring at Wembley. And drag it wide. I, I think well, you, cl you claimed it took a deflection at the time. I think it did, yeah. yeah. I think it did. Think Remembering it now, yeah, I think it did. Yeah, yeah. That's something I, mean. I think just... Right, yeah. Matt Green there gets his foot just tipped about, I think he went about a foot wide of the post. Otherwise, maybe. it was going in, yeah. Yeah, we did, yeah, yeah. That's all <laughs> that's it. I thought I wanted to double check forgot, down, yeah. down the line, see what, uh, see what you thought of it. But, yeah, what would it have meant to have scored in a final at Wembley? Um, it would have been brilliant, yeah, but it would have just been nice to have won because I don't know what that feeling's like. Obviously, losing the twice. Um, so yeah, it's not. A, it wasn't really about if I scored or not. It was about if we won, and that's all that matters. And we didn't. We lost twice. So the next one. So this is obviously Charlton. You said before this was probably one of your favourite footballing memories. John Nolan. Obviously, wasn't there. But I heard you two had quite a partnership going on that season. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I mean, we knew each other already before he signed. But um, when he signed, it was just me and him coming in together in the car and stuff and uh, we did, yeah, we had just had a good bond but even on the pitch it was just like the, from the first training session we were just all, like everyone used to laugh because it, it looked like we were just passing to each other but it wasn't, we were just, that's just how, what we were doing, that was the best option but um, yeah, everyone used to laugh at us thinking we were just passing to each other but it wasn't like, it wasn't. <laughs> Fair enough. I think. 27 goal contributions for yourself that season in all competitions and 17 for him as well. Does this go down as one of your better partnerships on a football pitch over your time here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have had a few, like I said, at Southport and stuff, but uh, a lad called Tony Gray, he was a striker and I was a winger then, but yeah, no, definitely. It, it, it was a brilliant season, wasn't it? <clears throat> and then, obviously, you're back to Wembley, you beat Charlton in the playoffs. And as Paul Hurst said he was disappointed if, with the, uh, the Trek Trek Trophy performance. What did he say to you all about when he went back to Wembley? I can't remember, to be honest with you. I can't. Um, but, yeah, obviously we all knew that we needed to win again. So um, the, Ch the Charlton game was brilliant. No, I remember everyone was just so focused on winning that game. It was, it was, um, it was mad, yeah, but... But yeah, the final, but obviously Rodham played better, better than us on the day and they deserved to win, but it, it was obviously close, it went to extra time, wasn't it? So, it was close. Yeah, obviously, <clears throat> the most flattering photo we could have shown for you, but... Um, it's alright, that one. The suit then, aren't you? What's going through your head as you're walking back into Wembley for the second time in what, less than a month or so? It's just fired up, really, after... Um, Obviously, after going back, um, playing the last game there and getting beat, I didn't want to get beat again. Um, but this was the, mo the most important one, really. It was more important than the che Czech trade final. But, um, <laughs> like I said, we, we lost that one as well. So, Did you do anything different in preparation for this game because of what happened with the Czech trade trophy final? No, no, not, not that I can, I can remember it. Um, I always try and prepare right for every game, so it will have just been the same. But yeah, that that was that was an amazing feeling that when um, when Rodgers scored the equaliser, because we've been working on that free kick all season and we'd done it a couple of times, but it didn't come off, and it just went it just went perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so you pass it across the box to Matt Sadler, is it? and Matt Sadler plays the perfect through ball. Yeah. And Rodman just dinks it over the keeper. Yeah, it was amazing, but. Like I said, because because the first half went so bad and we got battered first half, Dino's made a penalty save and kept us in the game. Um, but to get that, it just gave us that bit of belief because we were on top at that point as well. And then Carlton went off with Carlton Morris went off with his uh, with his with his knee, so that that put us back again really. Um, and the reg not regrets, but obviously things could have been a bit different, but. That was just the way it was. Did you have any chances in that game yourself? Were you just you're so close? You think, oh, what if? I don't think so. No, I don't know what that one was. I think it was just, well, it must looks like a left foot shot. But um, I just remember I got booked dead early, and I thought, 
I could get sent off here, and I should have in it in extra time. I was chasing someone back, and I fouled him. And it, the ref should have definitely given me a second yellow. We haven't got a photo of that, thankfully. Never, yeah, <laughs> but you never. No, fair enough. I guess looking looking back on on that season, is it a success or a failure? I, th I think it's definitely a, su a success, yeah. Um, we've obviously never come that close in my time. That was the only season, so I think you have to look at it as a, as a success. And it was just an incredible achievement for us to finish third. Um, but it just wasn't to be in the final. Yeah. <laughs> what does that feel like? Yeah, I was gutted. That, so much more gutted in the playoff final than the secretary final. It was it was heartbreaking because I was knackered as well because it was so hot that day and um, I'd just been running around constantly for 120 minutes and yeah it was just it was just I was just gutted yeah. And then onto the the next season 2018-19 season we had a lot of a lot of people move on players wise including the manager you know John Askey came in what was he like to work with? Yeah he he, he was okay yeah. Um, we, we, I thought we played some really good football when he was here, if I'm being honest. Um, we just couldn't get the results. Uh, and obviously the season we just had, probably expectations were a bit a bit high, really. Um, but yeah, I, 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 th I thought we, like I said, we played some good football on it and I did enjoy playing for him, yeah. Yeah, so all the results were close games. Can you, you look back on it and can you put your finger on a particular reason why the results just weren't coming in, the wins just weren't coming in? No, obviously that's how it goes sometimes and we were on top in a lot of the games, if I can remember rightly. And we did play some good football, but um, like I said, it was it was hard because the expectations were so high from the season before and um, we, wasn't that, we wasn't that same team and uh, I, thought we, I thought we'd done okay. I know we were... We were probably 17th, 18th, I think, wasn't we? But, um, yeah, it wasn't to be. And then to October and January, this is the October one, but October and January got a couple of injuries in quick succession. Do you remember what they were? I'd pull my calf at, against Sunderland at home. I, th I think that's that picture, isn't it? I think. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, so I pulled my calf in Mickey Mellon's second season. Uh quite bad but then I done I done not the same but my calf again um in this one yeah but I think it was out for like eight weeks. I can't remember the what happened in January. Games this time. And there were I think you you had ten games out I think in all competitions. Then you I oh, think yeah, you had five I minutes. No Sorry. I pulled my hamstring at yeah. at home to Peterborough. Yeah there you I go. Come on a sub yeah. Yeah so yeah that was for Sam Nick it's that mm. um yeah probably didn't warm up properly if I'm being honest then and I was just dying to get on. And then I went for a, I tried to take someone on and I just felt my hamstring go and I was gutted, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's the first time you'd been out of the team in almost two years at that stage. That must have been a bit, uh, well, a very tough thing to get used to, I guess, and was missing, what was it, 19 out of 23 or so games between October and February. Yeah, I mean, injuries are just, they are, as soon as you're injured, you, you get a time frame and you just work off that really and then when, you, when you're back, you're back. But um, yeah, I was gutted with that one just because I'd done something else straight away again. But it, like I said, it's my own fault, so. This <laughs> one, again, you were, I think, still injured at this point, but a cold rainy Tuesday night in Stoke. And you, the FA Cup through that season was quite special and I guess a sign of things to come was look at Anfield down the line. Um, but you had to watch Salford, Scunthorpe, and then Stoke on the sidelines. It must have been a bit frustrating, really, not being able to play in these games and at these sort of stadiums. Yeah, it is. Like anyone, will, anyone will tell you if I'm not playing, then I'm sulking or I'm not happy or whatever. But I just like playing football, and um, I was. I do. I do remember the Stoke game. I, I went the game, and I think it was we were two 0 down at half time, and they battered us to be fair. But then out of nowhere, we just come come back into it and. And we were flying second half, and yeah, it was an unbel a bolt scored the winner, didn't he? And yeah. um, against his home hometown team, so it was a brilliant moment for him, yeah. <clears throat> and then obviously the reward, Wolverhampton Wanderers, two two, very close in the first game, and then say you're back from injury, you get to play this. 
Is this at the time the best stadium you'd played at? Um, no, because we played at West Ham. Um, 17, 18 again, we got, we got West Ham in the FA Cup at home. We played them here, drew 0 nil. got a replay and played them at the Olympic Stadium, which was pretty much full, I think. So, yeah, it was probably that, yeah. yeah. Okay, <coughs> you obviously had, to, with, with these sorts of occasions, how much can you let yourself enjoy them? Or is it you've got to keep yourself more focused than, every, than, than anything else? Um, yeah, they just, I just look at, at them as like, it's just a free shot really, isn't it? In the FA Cup against a Premier League team, no one expects you to do anything. So I come on in the first game, the Wolves game, and uh, I done all right when I was on. But then when I come on in the, um, at Molyneux, I, I think I thought I was uh, Lionel Messi just off the first game and it was better than Moutinho and all them players. And, and they, they um, shocked me. By just tackling me every time we got the ball, yeah. Just <laughs> you straight back down to earth. Yeah, you? exactly. I thought, yeah, no, you are Premier League players. Yeah. And then obviously, <clears throat> as you mentioned, the managerial change well, Sam Ricketts achieved, you know, great thing, a great time under him. Was his managerial style very different to Askey's? Um, no, not really. I suppose um, they both wanted, obviously, wanted us to do well and. Um, we've probably done the same under both, didn't we? Really, um, but but yeah, no, do we both good managers to play for? Uh, this next one, Coventry, <laughs> yeah, Marco um, there, yeah, it is, yeah. Um, I don't, you scored a uh, 91st minute winner in this game. How much do you remember it? Yeah, I remember it. It was it was brilliant. Yeah, come on at half time. I think me and Giles, he come on, Ryan Giles, come on at half time. I think um, Coventry played, were playing well at the time. I think they were up there, maybe top of the league. Um, and then Giles, he crossed it in, and I just hit it side foot volley. Yeah, but it was our Christmas do that 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 night as well. So we was going to Dublin straight after it. So um, all the lads were buzzing. Obviously, it was a last minute win here. Yeah, I bet that made it. <clears throat> With football's obviously, I say, use the photo of Marco here and not one of you scoring the goal, just because I wanted to ask, football's a very small world, really, professional football. Have you got a, a sort of standout small world story where you've met someone saying it's just, they've just come up again later down in the career and it's just such a, a unique connection, anything that particularly strikes you there? Not really, no. Um, I do I speak to a few of the lads on the pitch and that, that like, we're all just footballers at the end of the day and they're all... They're all sound, but um, then they come and sign here or whatever. Yeah, it's funny how it works, but but yeah, it, it, I always remind Marco about that goal. <laughs> I told him about ten times. Yeah. <laughs> how does he take it? Like, he's got. I think he's got a good sense of humour. Yeah, he's sound, but um, yeah, he doesn't like that I scored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. And then this one just beaten Bristol City, and set up the tie against Liverpool. How does it feel knowing that you're going to play against your boyhood club? Yeah, it was, it was an amazing feeling. Um, I was on the bench for the Bristol City both games, um, and the lads done amazingly well. In both, in, again, in both games, I thought we should have won away at their place. Um, <clears throat> and then the home game, it was nil nil, and I come on. Um, but oh, I think I think it set Langy up actually, and he should have scored. If that was the game, but then he, he missed. But then Big P. Just come out of nowhere and just blasted on in the bottom corner. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. N knowing that we already had them as well, yeah, it was great. Yeah, you said um, <clears throat> earlier you started supporting Liverpool when you were tiny, like a toddler age, was it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, as, far, as long as I can remember, yeah. And like I said, they used to go quite a lot with me mates um, when I was younger, but then when you're playing football every Saturday, it's like, it's obviously hard to go games all the time and stuff, so lose a bit of interest in it but it was still it was still a great moment and a great moment for my family who were nearly all the big Liverpool fans as well. On <coughs> for this this day here, can you talk me through sort of what your schedule was for that? Yeah, you, know, you wake up and think like Liverpool later and then just sort of, what yeah. were you doing throughout the day like Oh I think we normally stay over the night before the games. Was it a Sunday wasn't it? A Sunday like mid uh twenty sixth five o'clock kick off I think. Something like that. It was on BBC though. Um, so yeah, we probably stayed over on a Saturday and then 
went the game, but nothing nothing changes really. Um, we sorted more tickets out and stuff, but I should have scored. I should have definitely scored in this game, and yeah. that got to me really. Um, Adrian made the best save of his life. I always say, but but yeah, I should have. I should have just put it in the far corner instead of trying to be clever and reverse it and saved it with his feet. But I should have definitely scored in that game. But it was an it was an unbelievable game. I mean, we thought we were dead and buried when Donald smashed it in our own goal, but <laughs> uh, luckily come come over there, come come on and uh, scored too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <clears throat> Talk to me about this man, his performance on that day. Yeah, he was brilliant. Yeah, I thought Josh Trent was the best, one of the best performances we've ever seen um, in the Shrewsbury shirt that day as well. The second half, he was unbelievable. Um, but come on, yeah. yeah. Good penalty, and then a great finish with his right foot. Yeah, after I won a great flick on against Matip, I think it was. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> What's he got? Like half a foot on you? At least? I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Any good stories from the celebrations after this? No, not really. I do. I just remember I was, I was buzzing, like you said, about the um, going to away grounds, and I knew obviously we were playing at Anfield then, so it was it was brilliant. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you say playing at Anfield, you old Joe Gomez. Um, does this feel surreal? Uh, yeah, it did when, when when I walked out and that, and you'll never walk alone, on And obviously, like like I keep saying, but all my family are big Liverpool, and I was when I was a kid, and you you know that song, that you know all the words, and it was just it was just amazing, yeah. But um, the game, I thought. I know they had a young team out, but they were still full of good players. I think if you look at the team now, what was playing Curtis Jones and players like that, they, they, they're really good players and, and we struggled against them. But um, my goal should have counted. Well, I'm not saying should have counted. But it should have, though, really, I think, just because I didn't even... I thought I was offside when I scored, you see, but obviously I know now that I wasn't offside. It was from about a minute before, which and I five phases of play earlier. It's like I think how, it was. how far do you go back? So, but you could, we couldn't see that on the pitch. So I'm just thinking he's going to give offside because I'm offside. But then you put the free kick nowhere near where I was. So it was like what's going on. But then I found out after the game. Yeah. Oh wow! So you didn't? Yeah, you didn't know at all what had been called up. No, until... I just uh, yeah, I just thought it was me at first because I thought it was offside, but it was Scott Goldbones. Backstud, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I know obviously it's didn't go how you'd like it to, but what are you feeling in this exact moment? You put the ball in the back of the net, headed. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it was just a weird feeling because I, I did 100% think that I, I, I was offside because I was stood in front of the defender, but there was someone else playing me on who was out wide, but I didn't know that. I just thought he's going to give offside here. Yeah. And then. I knew they had VAR, so I thought, well, if I'm offside, they're going to give offside. So it was a bit, it was a bit muted, if I'm being honest, but not for any other reason other than I thought it was going to be disallowed, but not for that reason. Yeah, fair enough. <coughs> so looking back on it now, it's obviously over, over two years ago, how do you evaluate that day? It, it, listen, for me, it's, it's a brilliant achievement that, that I've, I've played at Anfield in an FA Cup tie, so, yeah, that's how I look at it. Dave Edwards described it as quite tough and he felt quite disappointed after it, I believe. Did you have that, that same feeling? Um, only, only because, obviously, if my goal goes in, we probably win 1-0, to be honest, because we wasn't under any... They had a lot of the ball, but they didn't really create many chances. Free cut goal. It was, yeah. Um, so, really, we could, have, we could have won, but the FA Cup, it, realistically, we're not going to win the FA Cup, so... We would have had Chelsea, which would have been good in the next round. But um, yeah, we, we were disappointed, obviously, because we lost a game in football. But I wasn't overly disappoint disappointed, as in like on yeah, on the floor. Sure. No, it was, I, I was just more gutted as well because I could have scored the the winner at Anfield, yeah. which would have been yeah. unbelievable. And this season was curtailed due to COVID. What did you do with your time during lockdowns? Nothing. Just look, looked after me little boy and done homeschool with him. Yeah, it was um, it was boring times. Yeah. 
how I guess, well, how excited we used to come back to start playing football again properly when it, everything started to lift a little bit. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we we come in early and we had a good pre-season. Um, yeah, and I think things were looking good. Really, I I I felt like, um, but it didn't start very well and we just carried on like that. This next one, I believe this is your 200th appearance and in the very first minute of it as well, away at MK Dons, get, well, get the ball, bit of a defensive mistake, you just run half the length of the pitch and lift it into the roof of the net and very nice goal, another one, just run half, half the pitch and slot it in, quite composed. Yeah, it was me, I, I knew it was me 200th appearance and stuff like that, people had been texting me in the morning um, and then I think they give the ball away and then, yeah, I just ran, I just kept running with it and it was a weird one because when I've looked back, uh, Josh Fellas in, really, I should have just rolled it to him, but um, I just I just swung my left foot at it. It was a bit mad because I, I, I would never normally do that. Um, there he is. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he was too upset. No, I know, he, lo he loves when I score, Josh, anyway, so, yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, no, it, it, it was a bit of a mad goal, but... It was. It must have. It must have meant to have happened. Happened on me to two hundred appearance. Yeah. I mean, you score. You finished the, the club's top goal scorer that season, I believe. Was it nine? I think got that season. And well, so you scored a very nice free kick the next weekend against Accrington as well. Were you in Steve Cottrell's first league game? I think that was as well. Uh, finishing as a club's top goal scorer. Is that something that you particularly strive for, or are you because you're more out wide and not an out-and-out -out striker as such. Are you more focused maybe on just the goal contributions in general as opposed to the golden boot? Yeah, I mean, when he used to play right wing, uh, say Paul last season, yeah, it was more... Well, I did score quite a few then as well, but I was more a creator, really. But then the last season, I played up front a lot last season um, for Sam Rick at Sam for Steve Cottrell, so... You've got to you got to score goals if you're up front, really. And um, I thought I could have had a few more, but I was glad to to get nine. Yeah, in the end. And now coming towards the end of it, getting on to this season. This is your goal against Ipswich, made it one all. Left foot from the edge of the D, and again another one from the outside of the box. I say talk about it, but yeah, you do seem to just think, yeah, go on then. Yeah, I mean, again because I'm not playing up front you're not going to get in their box that, and I'm not going to win headers in the box against big defenders so if I get chances on the edge of the box I'm, I'm looking to shoot yeah uh, but no I, it was a nice goal that, yeah, I was I was made off but obviously, I, we lost the game didn't we 2-1 yeah. in the end um, which was disappointing but but yeah it was a nice goal Yeah, I was, I was happy with it and your next one yeah another one against MK Dons don't know how many that is in this list now but very different type of finish. The first time I watched it, I thought you smashed it into the roof of the net. But obviously, you can tell by, tell by the photo and also looking at closer in the replays, you just side footed it, almost lifted it into the roof of the net. A very different type of finish to yeah, smashing no, it from the. No, the, box. the thing I remember about this one is we were under pressure. They, they were playing some really good football. I'm, I'm, they must have all season now because they're, I think, the third, aren't they? So um, credit to them. And they had us under a lot of pressure that game. and. And then we were defending, and I won it back on the edge of our box. But then I just kept, I just kept running forward. Udo had the ball, and just kept running, and he played it through. But it wasn't where I wanted it. It was a bit too wide, so I had to come back in then instead of just going straight for goal. But um, I was looking if there was anyone to pass it to in the middle because it was a bit of a tight angle. But there wasn't anyone there. What I could see anyway. Um, so I thought I'd try and catch the keeper out and. Luckily, it did, yeah. Yeah, uh, and I say this is probably one of my favourite photos in this list, at least, just because you can see how yeah. much you're enjoying that that goal. We don't get many of you right in front of the camera, but uh, it's a nice yeah, little action I, shot. That I just lo I love playing football and I love scoring goals, and it's just it's just brilliant. It's just an amazing feeling, yeah. And then this next one, um, I think you might be injured at this point, but I wanted to pick it out because you're in there with. Alf Wood and Arthur Rowley, some of the best Shrewsbury Town has to offer for its whole whole existence. And I guess does that compute that you are that level? It, at this yeah, it makes you proud. Yeah, I've never I've never seen that 
that flag to be honest. Um, um, but I've seen the I've seen the two hundred and fifty not out one, which is which is brilliant. Yeah, and it was good when I come a couple of games um, when I was injured, and the fans would be singing my name and stuff, and it was that that was a big boost for me. Like yeah, so it was good. But that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Your recent injury, say out for four months and three days, I believe it was. You pulled up in training, right? And yeah, yeah. I guess, do you remember that moment? Yeah, that? we were just doing finishing after training and I'd smacked the ball, but I didn't hit it how I wanted to hit it. And I, I, I knew I'd pulled my quad because I've pulled me other muscles before, so it felt like the same. But then um, I went and got it scanned on the, um, the Tuesday night. And, and then when I spoke to the physio, he was like, you've done your tendon, but I'd ne never done a tendon before. so. I, I thought I'd just be out for like six to eight weeks like I have been with the other muscle injuries, but he said it was going to be 12 to 16. Um, but then we wanted to take it cautious, um, so it was the full 16 in the end. But it's like, it's fine now and such what um, it is for the rest of the season, yeah. Does that injury go down as the worst you've ever had then? Yeah, it's it's the it's the, the longest I've been out with an injury. Yeah, um, it was just a bit of a mad one, like I said, because I didn't I did just thought it was a muscle, but with with it being the tendon, it was quite a lot of the tendon apparently. Um, so yeah, it was frustrating. It was frustrating not being able to do anything for such a long time as well. Um, but yeah, it, it was good to start coming back to the games and watching them, but. Again, it was frustrating though for me because I like playing, I don't like watching. Um, so, yeah, but I've been back for a few weeks now and um, it's good to be, be back training even, yeah. Yeah, when did you start coming back to the games, do you remember? Um, I think it was the Accrington game. Okay, just home. after Christmas. Just after Christmas, yeah. And then I come to the Sheffield Wednesday game. Then I went to the crew away. Um, yeah, I, I think the Aki one was the first one what I come back to, because I just, I just, I don't like, like I just said, I don't like watching football if I'm not, if I could be playing. Yeah, okay. it's different if I'm watching Liverpool versus Man City because I'm not going to be playing. But oh, I see. If, if the only reason I'm not playing is because I'm injured, then I don't like to watch it. <laughs> and then say so this last one, you mentioned that you'd seen this banner out, but. How did it finally feel to hit 250? Was it a bit anticlimactic or was it just no, was it nice it to was, get it over the line? It was good um, because I remember when it was coming out and stuff and, um, and I'd, I'd already done my injury by then. So uh, the media and stuff, were talk, Lewis Cox and that stuff was talking about it, but I knew I wasn't going to get it that, that weekend. So it was a bit disappointing really that I had to wait for so long. but. We were laughing the other day though, what do, what are they going to do now though, because 252 not out now is it, or oh, 251? Yeah, 51, <laughs> yeah you got to keep going. Well, so, yeah. we'll just put a little line through the middle, you can just see we get 258 time, or something yeah. at the end, yeah. What about playing for the first time in, as we've mentioned, four months and three days, you come on for Joshua in the 85th minute and then with added time, I think you got 10 minutes in total, how did it feel being back out on the pitch? Yeah, it was it was good, yeah, um, but I've been, I've been back training for a couple of weeks before that, so... Um, but I just remember, as I was coming on, I, I totally forgot that Benno had already come off. So I was waiting for Vels to come off because Tom Bloxham had come on. So I, I, everyone was just waiting for me to come on, but I was just stood there and no one was telling me to go on. So I, I didn't know what, I was waiting for someone to come off, but Benno had already come off. So I was a bit embarrassed, to be honest, because I was like, what? And I sort of just ran on in the end. Then what, didn't he, um, did he jog off at the nearest point or something? I think he did, yeah. I think he did. <laughs> What's um, that? Oh yeah, I was embarrassed, but um, yeah, I can't really remember if anything happened in the game. say it was just. I don't, yeah, nothing happened. Did it really? Um, we didn't really have any chances or whatever. But yeah, it was it was good to be back and be finally back. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so now it's Super Sean two hundred fifty one not out, but. What does the future hold for Sean Wally? You're a football person. I mean, it might sound a bit of a stupid thing to say to a footballer, but you like 
watching games and you're very interested in it aside from just playing it it's not just a job for you right it yeah yeah no it's, it's my it's me life basically yeah as well as my family it's me life football um f i want to keep playing first of all um i know i'm 34 but I've, i still think i've got a good few more years left in me yet hopefully i'm doing my coaching badges now and I'm, i want to i want to be a manager as well someday but um Hopefully that, that could be it as well in, in a, a, a lot more years down the line, but yeah, that would be, that'd be unbelievable, yeah.